this is a big day, the Captain Robert Johnson Act, which uh, precludes or allows the, the capture of telecommunications devices in prisons has been a long time coming. We've known it was necessary. Federal law didn't allow Director Sterling to do dozens of things that he attempted to do. But now with an FCC change and because of his determination to keep these tragedies from happening by convicted felons and others who are in these, in these prisons conducting their criminal enterprises and causing criminal acts outside of the prison on innocent people, we believe this is, we have approaching the end of that kind of conduct. Having these cell phones in, in prisons allows a prisoner to conduct his business almost in a private office without any interference, day and night, whenever he wants, or she. And this will eliminate that. So this is a great step forward. I want to thank all of those involved for getting this passed, including, of course, the Speaker of the House, including Director Sterling, Chief Keel, as well as others. And we have with us today John's family, yet another victim of this kind of conduct. And we want you to know that we, we share your, your grief, your sadness, and we hope that this will be an indication of, of the good things that can come out of some very bad things. Greg Stern. Thank you, Governor. Uh, Governor, Speaker, Lieutenant Governor, Chief Keel. I'd like to ask my prosecutors to come up and join us. Y'all work very hard on this, um, the whole prosecution team. They work very hard to prosecute people that break the law behind bars at SCDC. I'm Brian Sterling, Director of South Carolina Department of Corrections. I also want to thank my, um, my team behind me, the wardens and everybody else that you see standing here. We work every day to make South Carolina safer. These cell phones are very dangerous in an inmate's hands, if you've heard me say, thousands of times. Today marks a milestone for SCDC as we take a huge step forward by signing this bill. Governor Rick Master will be signing into law a measure that will allow for us to stop illegal cell phones in prisons. It's always been against our rules, but now it's against the law. As the governor said, we could not get the federal government to change the law to allow us to jam. This will allow us to identify the phones and have them turned off. Jamming, of course, is what we wanted. It's 100% effective. Federal government can't even get a hearing in, um, in D.C. on this. So um, we had to work with the industry over the last 10 years. Uh, a veteran of law enforcement told me, when I say the industry, I mean the, the telecommunication industry. We met with them several times. They came to an agreement with us that what we would do is we would identify these phones and then we would add them to a database where they would turn the phones off. If you want to um, see how effective it is, I'll talk about that in a second at Lee Correctional, but there's actually a tweet out there about a, an inmate, I don't know why they filmed this, but an inmate um, filmed another inmate calling T-Mobile asking for his phone to be turned back on. And they said, T-Mobile said, this has been identified as a contraband cell phone by the Department of Corrections. We're not turning your phone back on. The veteran of law enforcement uh, investigator once told me the most dangerous weapon in an inmate's hands in South Carolina is a cell phone. Past decade, we've confiscated almost 35,000 phones. Um, these are, those are weapons. We consider phones in inmates' hands are weapons. The Johns family is here, um, and they will talk about that. More than twice the number of inmates who are currently incarcerated. We have about 16,000 inmates, 35,000 phones. Some of the things that have happened with cell phones, and y'all, most of y'all have covered this. People have been ordered to be murdered. Million-dollar drug rings have been um, run out of the uh, Department of Corrections. Victims have been stalked, um, and they've continued their criminal ways behind bars. Inmates from prison have... Um, Prison right over ran, they've run international drug smuggling operations involving Mexican cartels um, that resulted in the largest RICO case in state history. Behind me, we had a press conference with then the U.S. Attorney, I think Peter McCoy, talking about that. Just think about that. The largest RICO case in state history is being run from behind SCDC walls just because of these cell phones. Can't jam, as I talked about, um, but we did come up with a compromise with the industry. I'm still wanting to jam, but we can't. Um, as of today at Lee Correctional, we started July 1st, or July 1st, 2023, and it's working. As of today, 1,500 phones and SIM cards have been disabled at Lee. Let that sink in. There's only 1,116 inmates, so it's more than the number of inmates at Lee Correctional. The phones confiscated at Lee in 2016 
We confiscated 1,000 phones at Lee. So far this year, we've only confiscated 280. And just a story, we were over there and we went to do a search and the inmates were literally sliding their phones underneath their cell because basically it was a brick. And they did not want to get caught or get a charge for having a cell phone. Um, that was a, a couple of years ago. And these phones cost anywhere from six to $10,000, depending on supply and demand. Legitimate phone calls at Lee have gone up almost 70%, 65.5%. Um, those are the wall phones, as we commonly call them. They've had more than 20,000 legitimate calls, um, 30,193 before the FCC allowed us to do this. Once we implemented this scheme at Lee of identifying, shutting off the phones, 50,568 as of, um, that was August, September, October, after that. that. Looking ahead, uh, the speaker's here. I want to thank him for... Um, funding this effort. We're going to be expanding, as you see right here, to those facilities. Uh, we have in one-time money, $7 million, and in reoccurring money, because it costs to run this system, 3.8, almost $4 million. What the legislators did with passing this bill and giving us the money is to make South Carolina safe. There no longer should be a family like the Johns family standing here or Captain Robert Johnson, who couldn't be here. He's from Sumter, South Carolina. He was the contraband captain at Lee Correctional and he was shot point blank five or six times in his home because he was doing his job at Lee Correctional. So the violence not only followed him um, from behind the fence, it, it followed him home. Um, next, I'm gonna bring up um, Chief Keel. But the bottom line is anybody that has a cell phone in prison is committing a crime, and now we can hold them accountable and we can turn those phones off. Chief Keel is gonna talk about the impact he's seen on the crime in South Carolina. Chief, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mark Keel, Chief of SLED. Again, the Robert Johnson Act allows law enforcement to hold inmates accountable for possessing contraband cell phones. Law enforcement knows the danger of these illegal cell phones that they pose within prisons and outside of our prisons. Having an unmonitored open line of communication allows inmates to continue orchestrating illegal acts both inside and outside the prison fence. And we've seen repeatedly the tragic results. At SLED, we regularly uncover evidence of contraband cell conversations in narcotics investigations, scams where inmates prey on innocent uh, citizens, misconduct investigations, and gang investigations. Being able to hold these offenders accountable will help make South Carolina safer. Again, I want to thank the governor as well, the speaker, and the entire General Assembly for passing this bill. I want to thank Captain Robert Johnson for his strength and determination to see that this bill got passed. And I want to thank Director Sterling, who has worked tirelessly uh, testifying before Congress and here in South Carolina testifying and talking to the General Assembly about cell phone usage and how it impacts South Carolina in a negative way when it comes to crime. So again, this is a win for law enforcement and it is a win for the citizens of our state and for public safety in South Carolina. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Merle Smith, Speaker of the South Carolina House of Representatives, and it's a pleasure for me to be here today. Uh, I introduce House Bill 4002, which was named after Captain Robert Johnson. If y'all haven't heard what the story is, it's a compelling story. And I can recall the first time I heard this, and it was when I was at Joint Bond Review Committee and we were discussing cell phone interdiction and the priority that that was for the South Carolina Department of Corrections. And Mr. Johnson, who's from Sumter, from my hometown, came and testified before us. And I can recall how the whole room became quiet. It was one of the most compelling stories to hear someone who fought contraband, that contraband was used as an instrumentality to shoot him six times and risk and, and he was on the verge of death. He died twice on the operating table when this occurred. And so I think at that point is when the General Assembly vowed that we're going to do something to fix this. And I first want to thank Director Sterling. It's his persistence and it's his determination that get us where we are today along with Captain Johnson and with the Johns family. Um, it's their advocacy and their encouragement and their persistence kept this issue at the front of the, at the, front of the line for us in the General Assembly and in the halls of Congress, and I appreciate that. <clears throat> also, as you, as you heard, 
Uh, Jared Johns is another tragedy that his family is here with us today. And as the governor says, we grieve with you and we are sorry for what has happened. And this is, gives us the motivation to make sure that we can prevent these tragedies. If you look over here and you see all these cell phones, it wasn't a few years ago that we were complaining about the problem. How do we fix it? And what we have today is us fixing it. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, credit to be given. It goes to Captain Johnson, it goes to the Johns family, as well as to Director Sterling, the governor, Chief Keel, law enforcement, and most importantly to the men and women of the South Carolina Department of Corrections who are putting their lives on the line daily to make sure that we and the public are protected. So it's a pleasure for me to be here, and I thank you all for being a part of this. So, Mr. Johns. Um, I'd like to just take a moment to introduce the Johns family. Um, their son was a in the military, and he was um, subject to a sextortion scheme. He unfortunately committed suicide, and that phone was tied. It was a prosecution up in Greenville, South Carolina. I still remember when Mr. Johns called me and said, you know, we've got information that this happened in, um, at Lee Correctional. Um, worked with Solicitor Wilkins on this, but unfortunately committed suicide. Uh, we were able to investigate and find out who did it. I promised them and I promised Captain Johnson at the time that we would come up with a solution. This is the solution that we've come up with. Again, we're going to be going soon to the next prisons, and then um, we've asked for some more money for next year. But this will 100% make law enforcement, South Carolina safer, and it will help law enforcement. Mr. Kevin Johns. Thank you. Hello, this is Kathy Bolin. I'm Kevin Johns, and this is Kim Johns. We're the parents of Jared Johns a veteran of the U.S. Army who is not alive today because a prisoner inside Lee Correctional Institution decided he wasn't done committing crimes just because he was behind walls. My son Jared was a young 24-year-old father of two handsome boys who was living the best life before that fateful phone call that he received on September the 10th, 2018. On the other end was SCD prisoner John Dobbins posing as a disgruntled father in what we know now as a sextortion scheme. In the next 24 hours, he received two more phone calls, one from a spoofed number reading Greenville County Sheriff's Office. This time it was a prisoner, Carl Smith Jr., posing as a sheriff's deputy, threatening my son with arrest unless he did as the father asked him to do. To most, this may sound a little fishy, but to a PTSD sufferer, it was a literal death sentence. Soldiers are instilled with loyalty, pride, and honor and are held to a higher standard. And that's why he and many others are targeted, were targeted. This scam put him in the place feeling so low that he thought suicide was his only way out. Because of our family being so vocal about these scams, we have received phone calls from other veterans and their families looking for answers. Kathy and I have both had victims call us and we had to talk them down from the ledge. These devices are not just telephones. There are many computers that are being used to run hundreds of scams from daily from most of the prisons in South Carolina. This bill being signed today will c criminalize contraband cell phones, and I believe this will reduce the number of cell phones in prison because it will no longer be a loss of visitation or canteen or free time. It'll actually be more time to the prisoner sentence. Next to is remove them forever. The cell phone contraband interdiction system is a national pilot program the SCDC director, Brian Sterling, who's a very brave man, yes. who is a very smart man. He brought it to South Carolina prison. It identifies signals coming from cell phones operating inside prison walls. This system identifies phones, international mobile equipment identification number, which is used to turn the cell phone service providers who then turn them off. Thank you to our state legislature, Mr. Smith, for funding this with our tax dollars, furthermore preventing anyone else from being hurt by contraband cell phones. Governor McMaster, 
I thank you for taking time out today for signing this bill and making South Carolina safe. Thank you. Well, just briefly before we move over, I know it's hard for some, for the, for the normal citizen to understand that inmates in this place and others can run these organizations while they're behind bars. But all they need is a little bit of help from people on the outside. In the case of having bank accounts, and they have bank accounts, they can do drug deals, they can order executions as they did for Robert Johnson who was at home when he, he was shot six times and should have been killed, but he wasn't. Uh, he, he's still suffering from some of that pain, and that was that was years ago. But this is a great step forward. That I think that Director Sterling uh, deserves more rewards than he has received so far in his very successful career and the time and effort that he has spent in knocking on every door, making every argument, meeting with everyone involved. And he's finally gotten it done with the, with the help of the, the speaker, our legislature, and with encouragement by the tragedies that we've all lived through. And there, there was another one, you remember, not long ago of Brandon Guffey who had the same sort of situation. And uh, we penalized it at that time. They, they call it uh, sexting or uh, sex uh, extortion on the, the cell phones. That's already illegal. Th what this does is this will eliminate the use of that cell phone in the prison. Doesn't matter whom you call in or what you're doing with it. If you've got it and you're in there, you're in trouble. It's a felony. So we think that's going to have a big impact. Are there any questions for anyone here before we sign the ceremonial bill? <coughs> Bustos. Yes, sir. Um, I don't. I mean, I'd just be guessing. I mean, every facility has cell phones. Anybody that wants to get a cell phone can get a cell phone. And the goal of this is to make it cost so much that if you, you know, the supply and demand, so we're going to shut it off. If they want to try to sneak another one in, they can try, but eventually the cost is going to go up. Um, I really don't. Every prison's different. Every um, situation is different. I, I would just be guessing, but 35,000 over 10 years is one is too many. One is way too many. One can be that, that call to um, Jared Johns, or one could be that call to uh, Captain Johnson, or one could be that call to one of your loved ones. And they may not be here tomorrow because of that one phone call. It is. We're obviously waiting on the waiting on the estimates from the BEA, but I can tell you that that's going to continue to be a priority in funding in the General Assembly as we move forward with this next budget. Any more questions? Thank you very much. We'll go to the table. You write a line.